title of this video is Generational Trauma-Based Mind Control. We're joining the documentary about Pearl Harbor. Harvard defined an entire generation like the... Well, notice he said that Pearl Harbor defined an entire generation. In other words, everyone was affected, influenced by the media atrocity. And let me explain that. A media atrocity is seeing something violent and traumatic on film, on television, on computer screen, or even in a magazine or newspaper. And then believing in your mind that that event actually occurred in real space and time. R-E-A-L. Now, what happened was the atrocity occurred in real space and time. R-E-E-L. And your mind, because it was under hypnosis and indeed an evil spell, it accepted the media atrocity as actual atrocity. So he's saying Pearl Harbor defined an entire generation. And let me speak about that. My mother, her generation was indeed defined by Pearl Harbor. All the young people wanted to rally around the troops and war. In essence, they had no choice. My mother was just coming out of high school, I believe, when this occurred. No, she was in high school. But anyhow, as a young lady, my mother was defined by that event because the nation went to war. And so everything centered around the war and everyone uniting together to win the war. And that would include things like scraping your grease off of your... Um, your food, pans and pots, and then giving that grease so the grease could be translated for usage in ammunition, growing victory gardens, separate little gardens, so you could have your own little portions of food and not take away food from the troops. And on and on it went, okay, throughout my mother's uh, time in high school. Now, for me, the so-called Kennedy assassination defined my generation. Now, I do remember exactly where I was. I was in grade school, and I remember looking up at the speaker system mounted on the ceiling above me when an announcement came through that President Kennedy had been assassinated in Dallas, Texas. It's a vivid memory. For some reason, I was a young boy. <laughs> and um, just that little phrase, and that, that, those few words, 
because that was the start of trauma for my generation as a child. And of course, television showed the funeral services and all that, and it was talked about over and over and over again and in newspapers, magazines. At that time, television was not as developed as it is right now, but the American public got a great taste of trauma. And that trauma defined a generation. Now let's go on. And by the way, it is mind control. Because anytime a person is exposed to trauma, whether it is actual trauma, real life trauma, R-E-A-L, or R-E-E-L, that is on screen trauma, it definitely affects the individual. Kennedy assassination years later, or the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger, every adult... Okay, now, the explosion of Challenger, that's another thing, too. I do remember exactly where I was when that supposedly happened. Now, something blew up in the sky, but there was nobody in there, and nobody died, and nobody got hurt. In fact, you can... Um, you can find some videos out there where they'll show you all the ones that died supposedly in the Challenger. They reappear later in another space shuttle uh, event. <laughs> in other words, they're just faces and actors that they're telling you went up in some rocket and blew up. Right? Now, they do not yet mention this uh, on the video because I believe the date of this docu documentary is 1997. So, 2001, ninth month, 11th day, has not yet occurred. But all they're trying to say about uh, Pearl Harbor and all they're trying to say about the assassination of bobblehead Kennedy. By the way, the reason I call him that is because the Zapruder film was a fake and it was a dummy and Jackie or Marilyn Monroe, who's Jackie, just pulls a little lever or pulls a string on the dummy and the dummy is violently thrust forward and backward. All right. But anyhow, um, trauma is what causes people to go into a state of just control me. That's all I want you to do is control me and tell me what to do. Now, by the way, with all my talking going on here, <laughs> I just spotted something that... Um, is, an, is usually a trick that is done and that is they embed demons into screen and if you look in the center uh, around, around in this area you can see demon and a couple more down there okay now that wasn't intentional I didn't intend to do that but um, it was so obvious to me as I'm talking, I thought I'd better point it out to you. Now they do that because the visual itself is an influx of demonic beings who want to distort your mind. Remember, the Bible tells you that Satan can blind the mind. We also know he is the great deceiver. We also know in Book of Revelation that he deceives the nations. And we also know anyone can be deceived because of what it says in Matthew 24, 24. That he could deceive even the elect, if possible. And I used to have a channel called Matthew 20, 24, 24. Um, the elect deceived. But I, got, I think I got rid of it because I just had too many channels and 
too many videos out there and everything. But anyhow, if you look carefully, you might be able to see that demon. They scatter them throughout images, whether they're uh, on a television screen or a movie screen, a movie, or uh, in a magazine like Life Magazine or Newsweek. I've come across this many, many times. American Alive that December 7th will never forget where they were and what they were doing when the news of the Japanese attack reached them. Okay, so the idea is hit the American public with a trauma. And that trauma is so severe, it will literally change their thinking and their lifestyle. And it will make them such that they're, they're putty or clay in the hands of the controller. And having talked with my mother over the years, uh, it was apparent to me now that everyone, pretty much, in her generation, her time, as a young woman, as well as a young man, they were like putty in the hands of the controllers being told to do everything and actually sometimes even being forced by different things implemented by government such as coupon rationing so that they couldn't buy certain things unless they had coupons they can only buy so much of certain things because they were told there's a war on well, anyhow Generations come under a leading trauma event. For one generation, it was Pearl Harbor. Another generation, it was the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Another generation, it's the, the spaceship or the a, a spaceship uh, challenger exploding. <laughs> For another generation, it was the ninth month, the eleventh day, in NYC. What can you do? You can tell yourself these are media atrocities. They are atrocities in print, atrocities on screen, but they are not equivalent to reality. Now I hope this answers a question that was asked by one of my viewers, Liam. Uh, I just sent you a message and uh, I wanted to convey to you the concept of media atrocity and that's exactly what happens. It is an atrocity but it's only an atrocity in the media not an actuality, but the mind translates it into something that really happened. Even though no one of my mother's friends and family were at Pearl Harbor to see it. Even though no one in my generation was in Dallas, Texas riding in a limousine with JFK to see him get his head blown off which incidentally many think, and it does appear to be true, that <laughs> the actor who played JFK reemerges as Jimmy Carter. And I think I've got a lead on who that actor is, but I haven't yet made that video. Well, anyhow, if you got to the end of the video, you've been really great. And I do want to thank you if you got to the end of my video. I was promising myself to keep them short, but it appears I'm incapable of keeping my videos short. Thank you for watching. This concludes the video.